Hello, hello. I love my black and white junk journal, this one. I've been working on it for a while now and it is close to being finished. If it's ever going to be finished because I, I'll keep adding quotations and poems into it. Now, I would like to work on a few elements, however, and pages, and I thought I would make a video of this. Uh, my name is Laura and I'm from the Queen of Mirth. One of my passions is junk journaling, and another passion is sharing what I know, which is what I'm doing right now. So let's get started. Um, this is my black and white junk journal, and I have to credit Shannon Green for this because I saw a video or two of hers where she has a black and, she, she, had, she does black and white junk journals. And I was so impressed. I really loved it. The idea of black and white only. So I decided I had to have one for myself. And here it is. Now I'll just open it. It has a simple tie closure. But we're not doing closures today. We're doing, we're doing embellishments and pages. And I've pretty much planned what I'm doing because there are several things, like there are five or six different um, things I'm doing, so I thought I would save time by um, planning them out a little bit. So the first thing is, oh by the way, this journal, if you haven't seen it already, because it is featured in other videos, one or, one or two, maybe just one, um, but anyway, it it um, is a single signature, all black and white, and with all kinds of things in it. I, mean, I don't mean in it, I mean when I made it, I made it using various techniques. But um, what is in the journal, or what I'm putting in it, I'm just putting in um, poems that I like and quotations that I like. That's why I say it'll probably never be really finished because there's there are a lot of pockets and tuck spots. I can keep adding more of these things. Now that wasn't too smart. Um, <laughs> I actually put glue on part of this that isn't even gonna be in it. Now what I'm making is a little journaling card and I want, I want it to be on this side, and I'm, and I'll, I'll cut it down. But this is just a very quick little thing that I wanted to use an index card for it. I'm absolutely addicted to index cards, which is good. Let's see. Okay. And the glue I'm using is the tacky glue from Scotch, Scotch Tape People. And I do like it. I've been testing it out for a while now. And um, I've almost used up that bottle. And I do like it very much, actually. I think it will last as well, hopefully. Oh dear, I'm gonna turn it around this way. Because there's a this is a, just a, an old thing from from a box of papers that I have. It was left over from a different project, and it had a, a big wrinkle in it. It's so I'm going to put the wrinkle on the part that's being cut off. Now, see this is this is a very simple thing to do. So this is a very simple black and white checkered journaling card that can go right 
there. Now, the next thing we're going to do, or the next thing I am going to do, is I'm going to make another one, but this one already has a quotation on it. It says, a man travels the world over in search of what he needs and returns home to find it. That's the story of Alice in Wonderland and the Wizard of Oz. And it's very true. Now, if I just do this like this. And I have a photo of a house. Well, it's a home. Because it suits the quotation. And it'll be like that. One of the good things about this glue is that it actually um, will make a very thin line if you want that. I, I close it by putting a pin in it, a dressmaker's pin, so it's the, the, um, the the little nozzle or the spout or the head, whatever you call that, is very thin, which is nice. So we have another another card and it is it has the old photo of the house and the quotation. Now I can just slip it in here. Now the next one I hope you're having fun. I am. Anyway, okay, the next one is a pocket. It's a slant corner pocket. And it could go either this way or this way. But I think I like it this way better. Now, this pocket is from one of my kits that's in the Queen of Mirth Etsy store. If you want to ever want to take a look at, at the Etsy store, it has over 400 um, kits and items that I have actually designed. And I, I'd love it if you take a look at them. Anyway, and, and the, the link is below in the description box. Anyway, this is going to be like this. Sometimes when I print these corner pockets, I print both sides of the paper and then I don't have to worry about the other side. It, it, it all shows. But um, this time I printed it on just one side. Which is fine and the the image that I'm putting on the, um, the image that I'm putting on the opposite side that I'm gluing right now is just from an old magazine and I thought it was pretty cool because it's a piece of lace 
and it's black and white. Perfect for this. Now I want to make sure that we're all straightened up, going the right way. And I will just stick this in here. Make sure that this can come up. Yes, it can. And trim the edges. Whoops, that's not working. So my scissors kind of slipped there for a second. This simply goes like this, and then it there. So I'll quickly put a little line of glue down here. and we'll have that one done. I think I like it a little bit closer to the, co the corners. The corners and the edges are the most important of all, so things don't get caught in them. I don't have my bone folder with me today, so I'm just using the side of the scissors handle. Works very well. Okay, so we have a slant corner pocket here. And I'll just show you how it works. Nice. That's the leftover piece from the index card that I already cut in this video, and I'm just going to leave it here to use it as a teeny index card for a little quotation or something like that. Now, the next one is this. I found this kind of interesting. I'll show you why we're doing this. Okay, this was, this was a woman a painting and I superimposed this magazine image over her, not realizing that that would give her three arms. I don't really want her to have three arms, and I don't think she wants three arms either. Two is enough. So I'm going to put this girl from a magazine beside her, covering this arm, leaving this beautiful arm. So, yes, and I know that 
she's a little out of proportion with her new body, but it's all in the name of art, and I like it, which is the only consideration, really, because this is this journal is for me. I'm not giving it away or anything. And even if I was, I'd have it like that because I think it's important that we make art that we love, not art that we think people will like. Every time I go into trying to make things that people will like, it's a bit of a disaster. But when I do it right from my soul, from my heart, it's all fine. And even if I don't like what I've done, like I do a lot of acrylic paintings on canvas, and if I really don't like a painting, it's not time wasted or anything, it's a learning experience for me. And I often will just paint over it with white and then do another painting and hopefully I'll like that one but it's it's it all it all works out anyway here we go we're gonna make a with this one we're going to make a tag because there's nothing in this pocket see something could go in it though so I'm gonna make a little journaling tag just like that These little tiny projects that I'm doing make the journal very interesting when they're all put together. You know, it's all, they're all in one space. It's like curating in a gallery, but the gallery is a book. And um, they're all very simple as well. But sometimes the most simple things are the best in life and in art. Not always often. So here we are. And I'm just going to cut around her. And I'll use the smaller scissors because I think I'll have better control. In fact, I know I'll have better control. And when cutting, when fussy cutting of any kind, we want control over our cut. If, and often the smaller scissors are much better than the larger ones, and I'm sure you know that. So, I, yeah, I, I feel bad if I'm telling you things that you know, but I just trust that some people don't know necessarily, and so it, it, it's helpful for them, because there are a lot of beginners around. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to, this is a very inexpensive hole punch. It's the easiest one, it's the most standard one that you can get in any little store. And I'm just going to put a hole there. And then I have some black ribbon. And if I make a pointy end, see, there's a pointy end on this one, but not a good enough one, then it's easier to get it through the hole. And it looks pretty good, the pointy end. Now, this one can go away. There we go, oh, here she is. Okay, so the best way that I find to um, put a, put a, ribbon in a tag is put put it through make one end go through and then make the other end go through forming a loop ah there we are oh dear this this is <laughs> this is usually a much easier job i don't know what's wrong with this i think there's too many threads or something. So I'm just going to cut it again. Oh, 
Okay, so we're going to make the loop. I've got the, I have the ribbon going through once and then I put it through again. Push this one through. Ah, th this is not my day for loopy things. It's going to make me loopy in a minute if I don't get it. It's okay. Every day has its own challenges. And this one's not that bad. usually much easier. I usually get it through the first time. I don't know. You know how things are though. Start filming yourself on video and then and things are bound to not work out some of the time. But I think that that's fine. And I have determination which sometimes is as important as skill. Goodness me. What is wrong with this? I'm going to do it the other way. The only thing that bothers me about this is that it makes the video go so long. People will watch it to the end because YouTube likes that. Now, I, yeah, see, I got it through. Now I just want to put my finger through this loop to make sure I don't pull it all the way through. And then I want to make the sides pretty much the same because I got all, all mixed up there for a bit. Now, what I do is I take the loop that I made and I put both both um, ends through it coming back. And then I just pull it gently. I don't want to rip the paper and I don't have a reinforcer thing in it. There. Nice tag. Can write on this side, it has lines. And I can put her right there. And the reason I wanted a ribbon, actually, if she's because if she's going into this this particular pocket, um, she'll get lost. She'll migrate down to the bottom and no one will ever know she's there. But with the ribbon of course we know something's in there and I can just pull the ribbon and she'll come out super easily. Now this one um, this is just a scrap piece of paper that I had written on something else on. And I'm going to use it. It's just lined paper and I'm going to make another one. but just with this very inexpensive lined paper that I use for just trying out things and, very, you know, color sample maybe or see what's, you know, or to write notes if somebody phones me or something like that. So here we are. And... And the image is something that was in my stash. I have no idea where I got it. It's a photo of a man and a woman in front of a house. I'm not sure what it's all about, but it doesn't matter. I like it. And that matters. And it's black and white.
this is a pocket. I think it's pretty cute. I hope you can see it. Um, it's just a page from the bottom of a page of an old storybook. kind of cute the little house and the trees it looks like a little farm rows of vegetables that's that reminds me I should tell you too about this particular journal I'm I don't have a definite theme in terms of the images it, other than black and white it's just full of stuff that appeals to me and got it from wherever. Now this one, when I say wherever, I really mean wherever, like wherever I saw things or found things that would work. Now this one, it's another, you're probably going to think that I used so many um, of these index cards, but I do. I think they're wonderful for journaling. And I think I'll put the lined side that, um, It'll be this way, I guess. The line side on the red. And then we have the Six of Clubs, which is black and white. Oh, I love it. I oh, I just love using these playing cards. They're, so, they're, they're just such a good size for in pockets. And um, they're always interesting. And... They're a really good um, thick paper. You know, they have to be held and manipulated over and over so that they're strong. And I don't know. I made, I started doing altered playing cards, oh, years ago, literally. And um, I'm just so so happy when I look at them. I, I I used to make ATCs. This is like, I don't know, 15 years ago. We used to um, have meetups every month, once a month, at this 24-hour coffee place where they had really good coffee and, and a lot of space with tables and chairs and stuff. And it was so much fun. And we would just go and exchange them. They were, you know, in the true spirit of artist trading cards, because that's what they were. And I'd make a bunch during the month and take them down there and trade with other artists. It was so much fun. And I now have an album of awesome um, altered not, not all altered cards, I should say. I have awesome um, artist trading cards. Yeah. There. Oh, it needs a little bit more of a trim here. Nice. So... Here we are. Look at this. Six of clubs. Um, lined paper. Now, this bothers me a bit. This is, it's not perfectly straight. So, I am going to, and besides that's a red line. I don't want red. That's better. Next, we're going to take this little Velasquez um, 17, I think it's a 17th century painting. It's in Madrid. He was Spanish, a Spanish artist, Velasquez, and he painted the royal family. And imagine, this is a little girl. She's called the Infanta, meaning the little princess. And look at her. Look at her dress. It's amazing. I mean, what 
she looks about six years old. Um, amazing, just amazing. We're going to make a pocket from her. And hopefully, the six of clubs will fit in it. Yes, it will. it. I think that's all we were going to do today. It's enough for one day, I think, or for one video. And let me just put the pin in so it doesn't dry out at all. So I would like to thank you very much for being with me today and for you know, coming on this little journey with me in my black and white junk journal. Thanks for coming. I hope to see you again, or I hope you'll see me again. And I'm inviting you to comment, to press the like button, to, um, to subscribe to my channel. It's all very meaningful to me. I wish you all the very, very best. Take care now. I'll see you next time. Bye.